Hey, so a few days ago, I did uh, who does what in theater front of house. Well, actually, it wasn't even front of house. It was who does what in theater office version. Uh, and I didn't get everybody. It was 10 minutes long. And I still did not get to pretty much all of the jobs that uh, it takes to, to get a show off the ground. Uh, so let's talk about what people see. Because I started with that when I started with production management, kind of worked my way down. But what people see as theater, they see actors, they see musicians, they see singers. Um, maybe they notice the technicians. But, but those onstage jobs are one very small facet of, of production. So you've got actors and the people who train the actors. You've got acting coaches. You've got uh, possibly dialect coaches. coaches. Uh, if they are uh, dancers, you've got choreographers and movement coaches. You have um, vocal coaching. You have music direction. All of those things to get the actors ready. Backstage, every piece of equipment has jobs attached to it. Um, lighting, sound, projection, fly lines, like all of the design end things that we talked about before have their implementation specialists and their uh, technicians. If it moves on stage, somebody's got to handle it. If it moves mechanically, you've got people who deal with automation and that is their job. If it moves by hand, you've got stage hands pushing it on. Uh, lighting, not only do you have people whose sole job is programming the lights, you've got people whose sole job is hanging the lights. Um, cabling, circuiting. You've got uh, follow spot operators who um, may run everything via a, a console like the lighting designer does, like the, the, the board op does during a show, or it may be a manual. Um, Projections, you have, of course, somebody has to set up the projectors, run the computers, all of the lines involved for that, but you've also got to have artists who make the projections. Um, musicians, whole nother universe. Uh, individual musicians, of course, um, you've got someone who deals with, uh, you've got a conductor, you've got um, somebody who deals with hiring all of the musicians, hiring the musicians. Uh, you've got, um, clearly the musical end of things is not entirely what I deal with. So we have an orchestra pit. Uh, we have a person who uh, hires our orchestra. We have a conductor. Sometimes that is the pianist. Sometimes there's actually a conductor for the pit. Depends on how big the show is. Um, percussionists. It depends. Pits are very dependent on what the show needs. Sometimes you've got full orchestras, sometimes you've got 11, sometimes you've got five, sometimes you got two. Um, just kind of depends on, on what your show requires. Uh, but you have to have people who take care of them as well. Um, audio, people who set up the audio, people who run the audio, sometimes shows. We, we have uh, one fantastic guy who comes in and does our big shows. Uh, I deal with the small shows. Um, sometimes you have shows that are large enough that have, you know, two and three four audio people that, that are running the shows. Um, certainly takes more than that to set it all up. Um, what people see on stage scratches the surface of what it takes uh, to do the job backstage. So um, costuming, if they're wearing clothes, they've got to, it's, they've got to come from somewhere. So you've got dressers, makeup artists, wig artists, worth their weight in gold wig, uh, wig artists. Um, if you are building the costumes, uh, you have people who are doing that specifically. Uh, you have people who specialize on that end of things. So you've got, you know, cobblers and milliners and, uh, people who specialize in, um, men's suits. And I don't mean tailors because that's a whole different thing. Um, people who specialize in undergarments for shows, uh, men's and women's. It's really amazing how specific you can get and how everybody, this is why theater is such an amazing thing, everybody can find a place in our tent. Everybody, there. if you create something, anything, and you 
enjoy it. It's there for you. Um, properties, and we talked a little bit about properties management. Props are hard. Um, you have to, you have a person during the show whose job is to handle the props, manage the props, make sure the props get back where they belong, um, track them, make sure that they're not damaged, repair them if necessary. If you have weapons on stage, that's a whole nother thing. If you have fighting on stage, you have a fight choreographer. Um, oh, I didn't even touch dance captains. Um, if you are the kind of person that enjoys um, building, I, I took a, a class in making swords for stage. Loved it, loved it. Um, if that's your thing, that's a hard, that's a hard niche to find because of the, the, the insurance that's involved. Lots of places don't rent those. So you either, you have, you either buy them, which is expensive and you have to buy good ones. You cannot fight with cheap weapons on stage. It's a bad idea. Um, you have to find good weapons on stage. Um, or you, uh, or you make them yourself, which is completely doable and a lot of fun, but also very time consuming and uh, very specific. Firearms on stage. Uh, we rent a lot of firearms from weapons of choice. Actually, whenever we do a show, um, we rent firearms th that requires firearms. We rent them from weapons of choice. It's like the only place that, that rents them. Um, they have fabulous replicas. Um, they have their blank firing. They're safe to use on stage. Um, but uh, that's that's a hard thing to find. You again, you don't want you don't want to go cheap. You you want to you want to have reliable, uh, non lethal, not you know not dangerous replicas that work to make the 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 moments believable on stage. Um, we've actually really gotten away from we've gotten away from using them uh, using weapons on stage. Uh, the past few years, that's mostly because of uh, the shows we've been doing um, have not really required them. We've got one show now that has one, but it's kind of a, it's never fired. It's uh, actually two shows that we did this year. Um, they're never fired. Uh, they're just, um, they're handled on stage. Uh, uh, one by the, in Groundhog Day, there's a, the sheriff in the show has a, a pistol that he keeps dropping. Uh, and then there's a moment in Amos Behaven uh, during the party scene uh, where the gun fires up into the air and everybody starts dancing. It's kind of a weird moment, but it's really cool looking. Um, but that's a musical number, so he has the prop, uh, but then the gunshot, there's no gunshot, it's a rim shot. Uh, so, uh, but we're trying to get away from from using them on stage because of the, uh, uh, the insurance issues involved and but sometimes, you know, you can't, sometimes the story requires it and you can't really get away from it. So you want to use what's safe. Um, and, and that could be a whole, actually, I should write that down because that could be a whole other talk is safely using um, weapons on stage when you work in a high school. Uh, so anyway, um, those are the onstage jobs. Uh, just the stuff that the just the stuff that the audience sees, and it just scratches the surface once you start digging down. Um, again, uh, people don't know what goes into what they see. Uh, I think they do now more uh, so than they used to, uh, because so many people uh, who work in in theater, movies, film now like they put that that behind the scenes stuff out there for everybody to see on social media. Uh, and, and I love it. I think it's great. I wish we could do more of that. But again, because I'm working with kids, uh, there are privacy issues involved. So we put it on our internal school channels. Um, but I can't really put it out to everybody else. Uh, but it's a really good time. Um, but it's neat to see how everything gets put together. And that's what uh, I want people to know more about, uh, because I think uh, if if they understood everything that goes into it, they would people will see it more as an option. Young people will see it more as an option of yeah, I could 
do this thing that I love, that I'm doing for fun right now, I could do this for a living. I could do this. I could make this a career and be very happy and very well compensated. Um, but people have to know about it. So, um, and, and the people that more to the point, the people that make the decisions about where the money goes and how programs get supported need to know what goes into it. And not every theater is going to have all of those jobs, right? Or an, an individual for each of those jobs. Um, but all shows have those components. So whether it's one person doing them or 21 people doing them, all of those shows, that is what they all have in common. They all have those components. So somebody is doing that job, whether they have the title to go along with it or not. You guys have a great night and I will try to get you some, some, <laughs> some videos from rehearsals or at least from the theater. Cause, uh, that's where I've been all day and I come home and do this from the basement, but the theater is much more interesting to look at. So you guys have a great night.